Hello and welcome back to the studio here at Woking. Um, today's topic is consistency. Probably the most commonly used word at the uh, start of lessons when I ask people what I can help them with and if I could sell it in jars that I'd have retired a long time ago. So what are people talking about? Generally they mean the consistency of the strike of the club face against the ball. Uh, we're quite forgiving in golf if we feel a nice strike and the ball goes roughly where we're aiming but not quite straight. It tends to be the mishits, the thins, the heavy contact, when we can't feel that nice feeling of uh, club ball on club face. Uh, and that's what detracts from the enjoyment for most people. So I can't give you all consistency straight away, but I think if we talk about a few things which are happening down at impact, and then we will all hopefully get more consistent as a result of, of learning this. Let me start by taking the golf ball away and bringing in a hammer and a, imagine a fence post, it's obviously a golf shark here. Now let's just think if we wanted to hammer this shaft into the ground, how the hammer and the shaft interact. Clearly I have to generate some power, backswing, like golf, and then I have to apply the power to the fence post or the shaft here, as I do with the golf ball in golf. Now if we look closely what's happened, we've, we've created a fairly circular movement in the backswing here to create the power, because that's the way my arm works. But then when I get to the point of impact, that circle doesn't continue on this way. That would make the impact area very small where I catch the fence post square on top. Very hard to do if I just gave the fence post a glance and glow every time. What actually happens if you were going to hammer in a fence post or a nail, create the power, apply it to the top of the nail, and then we force the nail or the fence post in the direction that we want it to go, in this case straight down. So we end up with a hitting action that is rounded to the point of impact and then straightens. Okay? Round and then straight down. And that, that's what actually happens as we apply power to something downwards. Now that's no different to a golf ball when I'm applying the force this way. We create the power, we bring the power in. Now we don't want a single minute point where the golf club and the ball meet when the club then starts to go up again in the follow through. There's got to be an area of extended hitting to push the ball in our target range before we go in the follow through. You can actually see this if I put that down on the ground. And now you can see if I wanted to push this along the ground with my golf swing, I wouldn't just come down and on a circle, be that be my lowest point and then I'm straight up again. This is what is happens when we, our brains win the battle and we try and lift the ball in the air. It's the subconscious part of all of us that wants to lift the ball in the air. We see the ball in the air. We have to counter that through training um, just to get to the stage where we can generate the power, apply it to the back of the ball, extend the hitting area through the ball, and finish our swing. Makes a lot of common sense, doesn't it? And that's exactly what happens in real life. When you see your divot on the ground, it isn't one millimeter long, it's it's a good, good length of divot, which means that you push through the golf ball. Um, the lateral movement in the golf swing obviously helps this. So when we get to the golf ball, so much, so much force is built up. As my weight shifts forward through the shot, the flat part of the swing, if you like, the bottom is extended before it goes up again. And this is what we have to learn when we're playing golf. So I'm going to use the phrase today a lot, extending your hit. I'd like you next time you go to practice or play, to feel as though you're not elevating the ball at all. Your sole job with whichever club you've got in your hand is to push the ball forwards for as long as you can, okay, through the impact area. This will give you a much, much more consistent strike. For those who don't take divots or struggle to, it'll give you a slight impact with the ground in the club, which is ideal. Um, and hopefully this will, will aid your uh, striking capability and therefore get you more enjoyment out of the game. So I'll just hit this shot here and you can see, probably not so much from that angle, but you can see that I'm going to move forward through the shot and get a nice stroke. So I load up, extend the hit and stroke the ball cleanly. Now my weight has moved fully through the shot, the hitting area was long through the golf ball and therefore the strike, instead of it being near the bottom of the club, was near the top. When we leave our weight in a central position here and we instinctively try and hit up on the ball, we'll either ground before the ball and rise into it, therefore the thin shot 
or that grounding before the ball will take too much earth and we get a fat shot. So they're from the same general cause of problem. So give that a go. If you want me to help you with it one-to-one, -one, you know where to find me. Uh, and hopefully we can get you all a little bit more consistent in your striking of the golf ball.